Is there anything more fun than having a decent pocket pair prefop and then all of a sudden the flop comes with a card just one higher than it and you have to figure out what the heck to do with this second pair? For instance, you have kings and it comes ace high or jacks and it comes queen high. Do you know what to do in this spot? Most players don't have much of a clue, but today we're going to talk about exactly how to play these spots, give you the big picture concepts, some micro qualifiers, and just generally talk about the science of playing nut under pairs. Let's get started. <laughs> Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're going to talk about nut under pairs. If you've never really heard of this term before, let's just give a very basic definition. Essentially, it's when you have a pocket pair that is one rank below the top card. So for instance, you have pocket jacks and the board comes queen seven three. That is the nut under pair here. And just to clarify, we are not looking at boards where the top two cards are connected. So for instance, if it was queen jack four instead, pocket jacks would not be nut under pair. It would be a set and sets are pretty great, but that's not what we're talking about in this video and we're also going to be looking and thinking about spots where we are the aggressor in a single raise pot with position so for instance the cutoff we raise prefob and the big blind calls that's the kind of spot we're going to be looking and thinking about today as we talk about playing these nut under pairs so most players absolutely hate this situation and i think it's for a couple of main reasons first is it kind of feels like a slap in the face right if you have pocket kings prefob and the flop comes ace high yeah it kind of feels like you're getting slapped in the mouth a little bit it's going to happen some chunk of the time but it still sucks nonetheless number two is that emotionally you had high hopes for the starting hand prefop especially if it was something like pocket kings or pocket queens and of course now you're just sitting here playing middle pair and well that's not what you were necessarily hoping for and then also it's a spot where a lot of players just simply blast off and absolutely dump money and hemorrhage cash and they're wondering what the heck is going wrong this is a place you have to look at most players don't have much of a general rule on how to play these nut under pairs and without it you can find yourself very confused used and blasting off a lot of money, especially when you're constantly c-betting it. Yeah, trust me, it adds up in a big way. So I think it's best to start with the big picture rule, the major heuristic, and this is coming directly from solver work. If you're looking for the general rule when you have a nut under pair, it is this. Always check nut under pair. Just always check it. If you're looking for a single rule to apply in all spots with a nut under pair, that's it just check. And honestly, if you're just looking for the big picture idea, that's it. Feel free to leave, make sure to like and sub on the way out, but if you're just looking for a single big picture rule with nut under pairs, that's what to do. But if you're looking for a little bit more refinement than that, stick around and we'll go through some more stuff. So generally, there are some secondary board texture features that do allow for more betting, or at least not always adhering to the always check nut under pairs. So there are two solid rules to keep in mind if you're looking for a little bit more refinement. Number one, one is that kings on an ace high board is never a bet. Number two is on the exact opposite side of the spectrum is that if there are trips on board, it is always a bet when you have that nut under pair, which is of course a full house in that spot. Now, while those bimodal rules work for those two very specific kind of textures, let's talk about some of these simplified coin flipping rules. Now, keep in mind these coin flipping rules are trying to simplify solver output. So it's not exactly perfect, but if you run these through solvers, again, using that cutoff versus big blind situation where it's a single raised pot, you can definitely start to notice this pattern Pattern come up very very quickly so some of these simplified coin flippy rules again flip a coin half the time you bet half the time you're going to check here are the general rules for that number one is with nut under pair on an open-ended straight draw rainbow or double suited board number two is if you again have that nut under pair on a paired board or if it's a rainbow gut shot or if you have nines through queens on a rainbow board where the middle card is connected or single gapped so for instance if you have jacks on a queen 10 3 rainbow or pocket nine Nines on a 10-7-3 rainbow type of board, those again are going to be simplified coin flips. So if you're looking at this list and you're like, I don't know how the heck I'm going to remember that or actually use that in real time, maybe we'll go through some examples together and see if it starts to stick and meld in a little bit better. So example one, we have pocket kings and the board comes ace 10 7. So remember, the first solid bimodal rule is that pocket kings is never a bet with an ace on board. So because of that, this is always going to be a check. Very, very simple and basic. If we look at that other bimodal rule and say the flop is 10, 10, 10, and again, not under pair is pocket nines here. Nines is always a bet on 10, 10, 10. But remember that if we have pocket kings and the board comes ace, 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 that is not a bet because the first rule that we already talked about. So these are again, those bimodal rules being exemplified. Hopefully this makes a decent chunk of sense for when to bet or when you have kings on that ace board, when not to bet. Now let's 
let's look at another situation. This time we have pocket eights. The board comes nine, seven, six with a flush draw. This is going into those coin flip rules, right? So we have an open and a straight draw with pocket eights in this exact spot, and it is not under pair. So because of that, it's a coin flip on whether or not to bet or check. And just for the record, if this were a rainbow board, instead of having a flush draw on it, that would encourage a little bit more betting. So keep that in mind. If we stick with those same pocket eights, but switch the board out to nine, three, three, that again is another coin flip since we do have that nut under pair on a paired board. So you can flip a coin on whether to bet or check in this situation too. And while we're here, I'm gonna throw a pop quiz at you. You have pocket kings, the board comes ace four, four. What do you do? Do you flip a coin? No, we already talked about this. You have pocket kings, there's an ace on board. You always check kings on an ace high board. That's it. Don't fall for the trick. Pass it by checking it. Good. All right, let's switch the spot up now. We have pocket nines, board comes 10, seven, six, rainbow. Again, this is the spot where we have a rainbow gut shot. And because of that, flip a coin. You can bet it or you can check it in this spot. But if there were a suit on board instead and we still have the same pocket nines, that would be a default check. The gut shot rule is specifically for rainbow gut shots with these nut under pairs. And for the final example, let's say we have pocket jacks. The board comes queen, nine, three, rainbow. Again, using the rules that we had earlier, you can flip a coin here on whether or not to check or bet since again we have that hand that is between nines through queens and we're on a board where the middle card is connected or single gapped so flip a coin on whether or not to bet jacks in this exact situation but just like the previous rule if instead of this being a rainbow board this actually had a suit on it that would again be a default check so hopefully these examples help you understand what to do with these nut under pairs again as a pure simplified default basic you can just always check them not a problem of course, if you're looking for those refinements, hopefully these examples helped hammer in when you can flip that coin and when you should never bet. Again, remember, kings on that ace high board is never a bet according to the solver. Just as a very simplified rule, you can always check in that spot. So if you liked this video and you learned anything from it, please give the video a thumbs up. I would massively appreciate it. And leave a comment. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I don't really do videos like this that are very kind of rules and heuristic based, but hopefully you enjoy it. And if you want to see more like it, I can definitely get into doing some more content just like this, but your feedback is going to massively shape what kind of videos we do next. So again, a comment would be massively appreciated. And just for the record, if you want to do more exploration with stuff like this, especially bridging that gap between the GTO technical output and also the exploitative lines, definitely make sure to check out my advanced poker workbook, splitsuit.com slash advanced to learn more. It has tons of questions, full answer key, full companion video series showing you how to do every single section. It's massively, massively beneficial if you're looking on how to kind of bridge the gap between intermediate and advanced play between sessions in a really self-guided way this workbook is going to be right up your alley. Again, splitsuit.com slash advanced or look for the advanced poker workbook on Amazon if you prefer the paperback instead. But that's going to wrap it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.